and welcome to Night Clerk Radio, episode 27. Exploring more HDK, a dungeon synth record label that uh, we've talked about before. We've looked at some of their music before, and we're back in the minds, well, in the depths of dungeon synth, looking at two very interesting albums that we picked for very different mm-hmm. reasons. Mm-hmm. And of course, with me, as always, my co-host, Burke. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I cannot wait to, for the listeners to find out why you picked the album that you did. It's true. <laughs> Of course, first off, we do have a Patreon up, if you haven't checked it out yet. Patreon.com slash Night Clerk Radio. You can sign up for five bucks a month. You'll get access to our Discord, where we post random links to cool, vapor-wavy, and dark ambient kind of links. We talk about the episodes, and we're, we're just kind of getting started. Uh, and of course, you can vote on polls for our next bonus episode, which we will start work on soon. We are still polling our patrons about which one they want, although between Synthwave, Future Funk, and uh, Lo-Fi Music, I believe. Mm -hmm. So right now, Synthwave is leading, but we'll see. Of course, eventually we'll probably cover all three topics. We'll see which one gets discussed first. But Mm. uh, yeah, I'm very pleased with the response so far, and we're looking forward to producing a lot of cool exclusive content for all you patrons out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm really appreciative for everybody who's signed up so far. Mm-hmm. It's cool to see the, the support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to be looking at HDK, which is a, a European record label on Bandcamp. I think it means Heimatet di Catastrophe, but they're based in Italy, and it's a DIY label focused on ambient punk, minimal synth, dungeon drone, wartime music, and post-nuclear wave. This this record label has some great aesthetics to their their album picks, and they do very limited cassette releases of them. So I follow them on on Bandcamp, so I get notifications every time they put out a new album. And so recently they put out an album, a couple albums uh, in mid February. But Burke, why don't you just mention your album choice from HDK? Yeah. So you sent me the link for your album, uh, and we're like, I want to do this at some point, mm-hmm. and I looked at it and. The same day, it had all the other albums by HDK that came out that day. It was uh, actually the 14th. It was Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And I just saw this album cover, number 81, because all their albums are numbered. Husk the Mountains by Pontiff Erasmus. And the cover is just like this badass chthonic wizard summoning a bat over a mountain castle. Mm-hmm. And I was sold. <laughs> that was like, that was sufficient. That was my pick. No thought put into it whatsoever other than damn that art rules because a lot of the hdk art i just will say is awesome like oh sure i haven't listened to like a lot of their albums and really haven't thought about it much since we did the dungeon synth episode because it was um cobalt Mm -hmm. the album you picked was on on hdk but they're all that old 70s 80s sorcery like hatched pen stuff Mm -hmm. it's just really cool yeah very of its time one of my goals in life is to own one of their cassettes that has uh, a dungeon module in it like their liner notes are Mm. really top notch and they often will put in several of their albums they'll have a little adventure a dungeon (laughs) adventure written in it and i desperately want to get one of those but the thing is they only make like 50 or 100 copies and they just instantly sell Mm. out the like the moment there's enough of a fan base that as soon as they put something up online it just disappears unless you're there the hour it's out yeah I think I tried to check Discogs for you for like Christmas to get you one of those Cobalt albums on cassette. Mm -hmm. They are collector's items. There's just literally not many Mm -hmm. and they're, they're hard to get your hands on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and introduce our first album. So that was a little bit from the very first track of our first album, Husk the Mountains by Pontiff Erasmus, which they 
like one word, Pontiferasmus, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so like most of these things, I try to look into the artists. I often have trouble finding out information about HDK artists unless they're really famous. So I couldn't find out anything like interviews. This is the only album listed by them on Discogs. So I think it might be like a project or a collaboration because the character Pontiff Erasmus is also mentioned in the liner note mm -hmm. for the album. So it describes like a wizard, the Pontiff Erasmus, who's called upon to destroy a mountain town using his evil magic. <laughs> and I think that's really like the concept because these are all concept albums. Yeah. And you can really tell from that opening sample that this is meant to be like classic dungeon synth. Mm -hmm. There's so really old school, chill not in a mean way, but like meandering, like they're very exploratory. Yeah. Like they just feel like you're wandering through something and they're kind of repetitive in that regard. Yeah. So I think that's really the sound this album is going for, for the bulk of it. It kind of mesmerizing sort of uh, melodies, just kind of like talking about the artist. I think my strong suspicion is that a lot of these HDK albums are side projects of like black metal musicians because that's the trend we've seen before right mm -hmm. or it's just the same reoccurring cast of artists who are just coming up with new personas for these albums because they've got a cool concept and they don't give a shit sure that's that's what i was going to ask you because a lot of these artists i didn't know if it was like a cryo chamber type thing where one person is most of the projects on the album yeah i mean that's the thing they, they don't really say a whole lot about themselves yeah, it's very spooky. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting to puzzle all their reclusiveness. But I mean, it works because it just kind of comes out of the ether as this weird uh, mystery mm -hmm. uh, to ponder on, not to solve. That's sort of a good, I mean, a good thing for this album, because this, this is very much about pondering mysteries while on high from a mountaintop or through other means. Just, <laughs> just, just meditating. Yeah, and I think your use of mesmerizing mm -hmm. is a really good word because you do get lost because it is just so chill mm -hmm. and enveloping and so well produced that you almost forget it's repetitive. Yeah. And you just sort of sit back and it's like, oh, this is nice. Yeah. Like the first three tracks are, you know, one long track and two short tracks that are fairly thematically similar. Like they kind of sound very like, I don't know if it's like the wizard walking around his wizard tower before the people come to tell him to blow up the city. Or or whatever, but you just sort of sat back in my chair. This is nice. Yeah, it is different than I think than a lot of ambient per se, because a lot of ambient, you know, just mm -hmm. these these sort of soundscapes that build and fade. But like, there are melodies in this. There's there's actual full ass <laughs> melodies, and they are not mm -hmm. especially complex, but they're there. And the repetitiveness, the the sort of it's not basic music because it is trying to almost like. Yeah, meditate or put you into a trance or just because there's a deliberate nature to it that is prone to self-reflection, I think. Yeah. And this one's interesting in that regard, because it does feel to me kind of between dark ambient, because there are some soundscape tracks. There's at least one soundscape track, mm -hmm. track four, which does have I don't know if there's like a bare minimum required amount of ambience to be dark ambient, <laughs> but it does have like a little bit of footsteps and like oh they're walking through a, a windy pass mm -hmm. you know i don't know if that's walking out to the town they're gonna blow up or however that works but that's actually my my favorite track mm -hmm. because it is so varied and and so different and in addition to that little bit of uh fully it's not really field recordings because there's not like a real wizard out in the magical pass <laughs> so it's it's sound effects but it has this like foreboding synth but like nice little piano and synth over that and this driving chime or high xylophone or something mm -hmm. that's just sort of pushing you forward because it's just like shh, 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 shh.
there is a bit a slight dissonance, I think, between the subject matter of like the wizard blowing up a village and the, mm-hmm. the, the album cover makes it seem rather dark. But the music itself, I mean, it's not nearly as dark as we've heard other dungeons and or omni music so like Mm-mm. it's i wouldn't say bright but it, it is rather it is driving but it it is interesting mitts smash unless this village maybe the village deserves it maybe they're just assholes and this would i don't think <laughs> so i didn't get that vibe yeah order the osiris triad doesn't sound like the good guys yeah but i do agree i listened to the whole thing expecting it to go hard at some mm-hmm. point because like the first three tracks I took is very like wandering around our wizard town or whatever. Mm-hmm. The fourth track is is traveling. Mm-hmm. Feels very outdoors. Yeah, I like track four. Yeah, track four is easily my favorite because it's like a real ambient composition. It feels like it breaks away from like your dungeon synth for a little bit. And then track five, like the first half of that is just savor music, in my opinion. It just feels like in music, like you're back to just chilling. Yeah. And then I expected that to break away because the track after that is Maypire, which is the town that's being destroyed. Maypire pneumonia. I'm like, okay, that's the, that's the dark track. It's not, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he changed his mind, but uh, hmm. we'll, we'll find out. Uh, or yeah, I guess it's open to interpretations. It's a really nice album to just kind of vibe to just to like, just relax while you're go out hiking. Like this is good hiking music. But it's not it's not nearly as dark as a lot of the others. So, no, it, but it does have so many little bits, I think. And it's not very long either. It's it's only like 30 minutes or something. So it's a very quick little, 39. Is it that long? It doesn't feel like it. OK, props to them. I guess those 10 minute tracks. Yeah, adds up. yeah I was going to say, like, <laughs> track four is like seven and a half and track seven is like ten and a half. So, yeah, track one's eight and a half. OK, yeah. Math. But there's so many like good little bits. So the last little bit I'm gonna shout out, you'll hear later at the end of this episode. Not right now, a little teaser. I actually love the first half of the last track, Covet of Riches, mm-hmm. because it has these little like I call them capricious arpeggios, which sounds really pretentious, but people will know what I mean as soon as they hear it. And it sounds to me like the end credits of like a Monster of the Week X Files episode. Or like, are you afraid of the dark or something? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's like a foreground, you know, like Mulder and Scully are in the foreground. He's like, well, Skelly, I guess we'll never know the mystery of the Saratoga scooter. (laughs) And then like they walk off frame and it pushes in on like some grandma hanging a little scooter ornament from her Christmas tree or something Mm -hmm. as you fade to credits. That's like totally the vibe. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I love that. Especially because we've been watching a lot of like Tales of the Dark Side. Oh, yeah. Shit. God, Tales of the Dark Side. Intro just fucking slammed you in the face as soon as it starts <laughs> up. That uh, here sings in. Yeah, go listen to that at some point. It's like, whoa. Or the real masterpiece, Dark Place theme rules. Unironically. Oh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Yeah. No. Yeah. Unironically is an amazing opening theme for a joke show. Oh, yeah. The soundtrack for that. That actually won some, I think, an award. Oh, really? Best soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the guy who made it is actually a legit composer and fucking, they just turned him loose. Yeah, just fucking go ham and he's like okay yeah and it works so well but yeah i think though that anybody who likes any of that classic dungeon synth or just wants to explore something that doesn't take too long Mm -hmm. to to dig into i i definitely think this is worth checking out yeah for sure That is a bit from uh, track three, Patient in Zero, from La Gabia Humana, which from now on I'm just going to call The Human Cage, which Mm -hmm. is another concept album. It is listed as Augusto Rala as the composer, but of course, the thing about this album is that it is the soundtrack for a movie that does not exist. The Human Cage does not exist, but the liner notes or the the description on the Bandcamp page says, in 1979, a sci-fi TV movie called The Human Cage 
was never made, but somebody made the soundtrack for it, and we found it. It was sent to us mysteriously, and so we just sent it out. We, we just posted it uh, here. So should we believe the story? Maybe not, but we prefer to think it's true. Have a good listening. So this is a love letter to the soundtracks of Italian horror and science fiction movies of the 70s and 80s. It is extremely my jam most of the time. This album goes places, and some places are awesome, and some places are... <laughs> Not it takes chances and not every not, it doesn't always pay off, but I'm glad I listened to this album. Yeah, me too. I think it was a great choice because we're both huge fans of all those Italian horror classics mm-hmm. and like broadly Jallo and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for those of you who are not film nerds, for decades, the Italian film industry was a land of contrast because, you know, on one hand you had Fellini and uh, uh, classic films. But on the other hand, you had tons of, of schlock of low budget movies that were being pumped out. And Italian filmmakers love to cash in on, on existing Hollywood trends. And they would frequently eat, go to the point of like labeling their movies as sequels to Hollywood or, you know, uh, American <laughs> movies. So you have like Zombie 2 as a sequel to Dawn of the Dead or something or Night of the Living Dead. And like there's a sci fi movie that was called Terminator 2 <laughs> after Terminator 1 was released. <laughs> Set in Venice has nothing to do with Terminators. And so the soundtracks for these films were, were playgrounds for their composers as they just were experimenting with early synthesizer technology, punk music, rock. They just love to throw in anything because the whole thing was just, just to grab the audience's attention. It was better to go bigger and more excessive than to to be mm-hmm. mild or constrained. Because like in a lot of these movies, there's so much padding that's so cheap that the soundtracks have to do have to carry the film. Like they they just like the, the soundtrack is so insane or or so over the top that like <laughs> even though it's just a bunch of people running down a corridor of a you know steam uh, corridor you know some basement somewhere, it, it still seems compelling because the music is building up to something that a promise they can never fulfill. And sometimes it did pay off. Sure. Yeah, like the movie Suspiria, directed by Dario Argento. Uh, the soundtrack for mm-hmm. uh, Goblin is is a classic oh, uh, yeah. film score. Cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, if you haven't heard that, it is. It has been sampled by hip hop groups. It has been replayed. Like Goblin would go around and show the movie while performing the soundtrack live to audiences. Like that's how how acclaimed it was. How how much people loved it. Yeah. This is sort of the basis for this album is, is sort of an homage to this whole thing. Yeah. So I was just going to add a few things. Is first of all, if any of this interests you, uh, I'm just going to put a little link to like a Discogs list of famous Italian horror soundtracks. Mm-hmm. That is one I largely agree with. And I think it's great background listening to check out. Mm-hmm. But it's also interesting, whereas if, you know, this is too film nerdy or you think this doesn't interest you, you probably accidentally have seen things heavily inspired by this genre because there's a lot of back and forth between American cinema, like you were saying, and Italian films and, and Jalo, because like, you know, they were real into to Hitchcock, but then a lot of stuff in the 70s that Americans made all pull heavily from that European film tradition. Mm-hmm. There's just this, there's this sort of like interesting back and forth. So if any of this film history stuff it remotely interests you, I think there's a, a lot to investigate there. For sure. And Again, the people, they just went wild in these compositions because the, the, it wasn't necessarily for art. It was to just for base commercial interest, just to like, hey, look at me, look at me, pay attention. You definitely want to see me in the theater. You definitely, you know, want to tell your friends about me. They were just fighting to get paid in a way, but they still viewed it as art. Like, I mean, they were, st- they still had some standards. It's, it's a fascinating part of film history. These soundtracks, they jam. So what we have here is is this concept album that's being made in the, in this style, but is obviously new material. So it, it's emulating the old synthesizers. There's some really great liner notes in the album, if you buy or download it, that describe what every track, what is on every track. And they have great titles like "Infected Blood" and "Diagnosis" mm-hmm. and "Viral Sequence." The thing about this album, more than anything else, though, is that it it is extremely varied. So like a movie soundtrack mm-hmm. is often. Because they're 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 scoring to a, a series of events that we can't see because the movie doesn't exist. But like, for example, I think the highlight of the album is a track that resembles like there's nothing in the this album. <laughs> the rest of this album resembles track eight, Night Escape. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's just put a little sample in here.
So the descri description we have for Night Escape in the liner notes is agitated swing bass with a continual bass, altered organs and deformed sinusoids uh, fleeing from planet Earth. Noir trumpet solo. Yeah. It's yeah. Very jazzy. You know, if there's a whole album, this I would categorize this as dark jazz, mm. but it <laughs> it rules. The first time I listened to this album, this started up as like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. So this track rules and that's a great sample. But like you're trying to do, we have to give it context mm -hmm. because the first three or four tracks of this album mm -hmm. are just like, oh, I'm trapped in an alien lab mm -hmm. and it's bubbling and dripping. Yeah, like our first sample, track three. Yeah, that that's more representative yeah. of the album as a whole. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of mood changes, and I don't always agree with all of them, because after after track eight, after we get into side B, there starts to be water dripping sounds and other sort of... Yeah, 10 and 11 mm. have the water. I don't care for that. Not a fan? Is it like reverse ASMR for you or something? It's just, it just took me out of the album. Like, it's it's... Okay. It's drawing attention to itself, but not in a fun, cool way. You know, you're like, okay, uh, okay, I get it. All right, you can stop now. It's just, yeah. Well, I guess maybe reverse ASMR. I just wanted to say reverse ASMR. <laughs> Don't mind me. Yeah, no. And then it starts to slow down a little bit after that. And in, in the later mm -hmm. tracks, getting more dark, getting chaos. I mean, literally one of the later tracks is called Chaos in the Streets with sirens sound effects and broken melodic lines it's quite dark of course for me one of the other because i am a sucker for this instrument i i did like track nine because <laughs> there's a mandolin in there and uh i, I yeah. did like that quite a bit the return of the mandolin yeah. Silent Hill just broke my brain. Can't not like it. Yeah, Berg, what, what, what stood out to you? Yeah, this was an album was a difficult one to crack for me, mm -hmm. even after multiple listens, because the meta stick of it is that it's a soundtrack for an album mm -hmm. that doesn't exist. But a lot of it sounds like a mix of score and just fully mm -hmm. like stuff that if it was playing under the film and mixed in properly, you wouldn't even think about it at all like the water dripping or uh there's a lot of other just gross grimy mm -hmm. bubbling sounds like i said and uh a lot of just abrasive crackling all that stuff like in your your first sample like from a technical production sound of like somebody in 2020 you know for a 2021 release sitting and making it it's really skillful it's really well done mm -hmm. there's a lot of like really interesting things but some of it feels like it drifts a little bit away from being the score of a movie, unless you're just going like really gonzo experimental score of like, this is the actual score of the movie is also all these gross sounds <laughs> and this industrial aspect, which is fine, mm -hmm. but it just lacks that like Suspiria. Yeah. Um, that like cohesive jam. Yeah. I think that's the main thing. Uh, the keyword here is cohesive. This is not a cohesive album. This is a lot of very cool experimentation or. Very different styles of music put next to each other, and I don't think it works as a whole entirely. So there are tracks I would pull from this to put in like mixes, but I don't know if I would listen to this album front to back again, at least like as yes yeah, background listening music. Because again, some of this some of the stuff just pulls me out of it. Mm -hmm. I would definitely steal it if I was making a movie, mm -hmm. not illegally, of course, or something. But it's like the kind of stuff that you know when I was in film school, I would have thrown in the background of one of my student films oh sure if i had found it oh yeah see if i can get augusto rala to score my next movie hell yeah <laughs> yeah i mean and i totally would because like i said a lot of the production and when there is like written music or actual instrumentation it's really good mm -hmm. it's really really good uh, what i really liked is it's very simple but like i love 
the way that like this washed out organ is in track seven. It's just a short little organ piece. Mm -hmm. Just the sound of it is so perfectly ominous and like, yeah, washed out is the word I'd use for it. It's just, I really like stuff like that. And then you just kind of get into that. And then I guess the organ goes into the jazz stuff. So that rolls. Then you go from the jazz stuff into like, and you're like, all right. Yeah, I put on my notes for track seven, like it was Scooby-Doo kind of organ music. So, oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And which is de definitely perfect for this kind of <laughs> album because mm -hmm. Scooby-Doo is definitely pulling from the same well as all the, those other shows and the, these kind of uh, soundtracks. So it makes me want to find out what this artist, this is obviously not the artist's first work, whoever th this artist really is. And I, I, I would be very curious to find out what else they've done and mm -hmm. explore it. So maybe we'll find out someday, maybe not. It's a real interesting album. Yeah, I think it's interesting. And I personally wish it had been more consistent. Mm -hmm. But if that's part of trying to form this larger meta context of being some lost and recovered mm -hmm. stuff from a, a movie, it's, you know, a feature. Yeah. Not a bug. But I don't know if it always worked for me. Yeah. But that's my problem with so many real movie soundtracks is that they follow the movie. And so it's like, I'll like some of the songs, but then it's like, oh, the killer is killing somebody. Uh, that music is harsh in my my vibe here. That's a little too, mm -hmm. you know, or, oh, here's the comic relief song. But, you know, it is. Hey, <laughs> they can't all be Dragula, man. I, well, I mean, if this was the <laughs> 90s, we could make it all Dragula because he was legally required to put Dragula into every soundtrack possible or movie. Video game about roller skating doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got to have Dragula. You got to have Dragula in it. It's just the law. Dragula is the crab of the 90s soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everything becomes crabs. Everything is Dragula. Yeah. So even if you don't get this album, I would definitely at least look up some of the Italian horror film soundtracks and take a listen because they're uh, they're a trip. Thanks for delving with us into the depths of Dungeon Synth once again. It's always fun to <laughs> rise and grind and level up our music listening skills. Does that work? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too far. We have a strict no hustle and grind <laughs> policy here. But we're going to be staying down in the dark for our next episode as we'll be heading back to the club to listen to some dark jazz. And uh, probably our first bonus episode for patrons will be about Synthwave because it's currently in the lead. And that's not a surprise that Synthwave would be the one taking the lead. So we'll be exam probably examining the, the dark cyberpunk dystopia future of the 1980s and why when you're so cool, you got to wear shades at night. I don't know. Maybe, maybe going too far with this. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for <laughs> listening to us. I am at Ross Payton on Twitter. Nightclerk Radio is at Nightclerk Radio on Twitter, of course. And Burke is at Burke Nick Berkinson on Twitter. And of course, we have a Facebook page and we have a website, nightclerkradio.com. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever you use to listen to podcasts. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your enemies, tell acquaintances, uh, just tell everybody about us. And thanks for listening. Talk to you all next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.